PK in the universe here to talk about my physical Switch collection. I don't have as many Switch games physically as I do Wii U games. For the most part this generation, that is the Switch, I've mostly gone digital. But I want to talk about the few physical Switch games I have. I have a total of seven. And um, I'm also going to talk about the game I purchased for my buy one game for all of 2020 challenge. And I'm going to talk about a game that was gifted to me that was not the game, but the game I'll tell you what it is. So, anyways, so, so uh, here we go. First up, the game I just recently talked about in my Final Fantasy Adventure video, and that's the Collection of Mana. This is actually, there's an actually a, a, f a cover or whatever on here, but you can actually, it's one of those reversible covers. So I have it the alternate way right now. I did that just for this video. Thought it'd be cool. Up next, another game I talked about in a video quite a while ago, and that is Dragon Quest Builders. This was a game I'd gotten from my wife during that whole incident where I sprained my ankle. But if you want to see that video, come look for it and whatnot. It's in my channel. Anyways. <laughs> then, of course, I got, I mentioned this game in my recent Wii U video. I got uh, Breath of the Wild. Love playing Breath of the Wild on the go. Can't go wrong with Breath of the Wild. This game is one of three games that I bought last year, and that is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Switch. And this is a remake, of course, as many of you guys know. I love this game. It reminds me of old classic claymation, you know, type films like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You know, I just, I really like this game. And Link's Awakening is one of those games that, if you count, you know, the, the original version and DX version, it's a game I've beat probably at least three or four times at least. It's one of those few games that I've beat more than once. So I you know, love Link's Awakening. Can't say enough about this game. Up next, another game I bought last year. As you guys know, I love Super Mario Maker. I made that really clear in my last uh, Wii U collection video. And I did a Wii U unboxing. You know, I've always talked about how much I love Super Mario Maker. Well, I got Super Mario Maker 2. And this is the version that came with one year of... Um, Nintendo Switch Online subscription and so yeah I'm actually paid up all the way till next year actually at this time so I have can enjoy Nintendo Online for quite a while and that's kind of it was kind of nice it's like for basically this was cost 70 bucks when it was new so it was like you got Switch Online for half off and that's a great deal so yeah Got the, I don't even care that the cover looks different. I feel like maybe at some point down the road, a cov the cover variant might be harder to find. Maybe, probably not, but who knows. I like having something that's unique that in general, so I like that. But anyways, the next game I got was, um, and this was the other game I got last year of physical Switch games, and that is uh, Penny Punching Princess. This is a game I... I had toyed with the idea of doing a review of, but I just have not played enough of it to do a proper review. I remember I talked to Scarlet Sprites about this game too, actually, and um, he said he had played a little bit of it and he just never could get into it. And I only played maybe an hour or so of this game, and I can kind of understand that sentiment from just that hour I played. I'm like, this, I don't really understand this battle mechanic all that well. And maybe it's one of those games I just need to give more of a shot to. But uh, I like the premise and the idea of it. It's definitely not... I thought it was going to be more like a Link's Awakening type of game. But really, to me, what it's like, it's like a Streets of Rage type of game. Except it's a top-down Streets of Rage. It's a brawler game. But that's my thoughts on the game anyways. And there's... You can bribe people and summon people. I don't really understand... I don't totally understand enough about this game to really talk a whole lot about it. But that's the game. Now, recently... Last month, my wife had bought me a game, and I did not ask for this game, okay? I honest, I honest to God did not ask for this. I, I talked about it a little bit, but I didn't think she was going to get it for me. It just kind of popped in the mail. It's funny, um, I showed this off on Twitter, and even Mighty Q Dog, a fellow YouTuber, uh, had asked me, is this a loophole or something? And I was like, well, I'm going to make a video about that, and I'll talk more about that. And that is um, Animal Crossing for the Switch. And this is the first game that I've acquired in the entire month of, or entire month, entire year of 2020 that's physical, or in general, was well, physical, yeah, it's physical. Uh, what can I say? I played about 30 hours of it. 
I got really frustrated during the whole bunny day thing and I just have not been able to come back to this which is a shame because my son really likes this game and you know he's three years old and I just I just have had a hard time coming back to it I it's still a good game it is it's a really good game it's an interesting little life simulator and what's really neat about this game is the social media aspect of people who share tweets about this and on other forms of social media is just you know people get to see what everybody else has but I also look at it from my own perspective of I have a house there's actual real-world gardening things and lawn care things and actually acquiring real things that I have to do in real life obviously it's not quite like this and I don't deal with cute animals and villagers and stuff but after a while this game got to be I'm just like it's it's still a good game I just it wasn't the game that it, I don't know maybe it was just bunny day maybe it was just bunny day that just totally ruined it for me I don't want to say it ruined it for me I believe I will come back to this just I'm just not in that place right now I find myself wanting to play different games I want to play more Legend of Mana actually which is a game I've gotten really into in the last year or so especially after I'd played Final Fantasy Adventure Legend of Mana is a game I gravitated to and I've I don't know if I talked about that in my other video, but yeah, I won't. sometime I'll make a video about Legend of Mana. But anyways, I'm rambling here. Let's get to what the actual game that I purchased for my for my thing. And that game is it, it's a digital game, and actually I got it on sale through the eShop. This is a game I had borrowed from the public library physically, and actually still had an existing save file for it on it, believe it or not. And that game, I don't know if you can see that very well is the second Genesis collection. Interestingly enough, I had talked to Mighty Q Dog actually on Twitter again about this, and I had mentioned, it's like, I wonder if I should get this game. And he's like, well, if you're gonna get a game, you might as well get the game that has 50 games in it. So that's actually what I ended up doing. And I've been playing a ton of Shining Force. Shining Force is a game that I have a lot of nostalgia for. I used to play it in the early 2000s on an emulator, and I had played and beat it there. So, you know what? I wanted to play this game again. I own a physical copy of it, and I just I wanted to play it on the go, just sitting down, you know, thinking about it. To, I was like, you know what? This is the game for me. Plus, there's a lot of other good games on there. Um, there's Shining Force 2. Landstalker was another game I had heard good things about. Um, the fantasy, a bunch of the Fantasy Star games are on there, so I'm like, there is plenty of entertainment in just this one, you know, collection. You know, I do have the Sega Genesis Ultimate Collection on PS3, but my PS3 disk drive has not worked for a while, which I think I mentioned in other videos. Or maybe I just mentioned it on Twitter all the time, I don't remember. But anyways, yeah, so I was like, I want to play this game on the Switch, and that's what I'm going to do, so... This is the game I've committed to, you know, and yeah, so that's the game I got. And interestingly enough, my series finale of my 12 games a year series that I did in 2018 was where I ended up buying the NES Classic. So I guess it's only fitting that I would pick another giant compilation of a game to pick for my only game for all the year. And I think, I think this is a game that will occupy me. And I think, again, I have a huge backlog of games. Um, so yeah, this was the end of the buy one game for all 2020 challenge. I will do another video at the end of the year to tell you guys that hopefully that I made it all the way through without buying another game and I'm pretty confident I will. I mean, anything could happen. I, I, I don't know. I'm, gosh, I don't know what I would do if I don't win, the, you know, complete this challenge. Turn it into a buy two games. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm I'm going to complete this challenge, and I've said I'm going to do it, and that's what I'm going to do. You know, there's times I think maybe I should just not do this, and but then I have those moments, and I'm like, you know what? No, this is something I've said I'm going to do on video, and I'm going to do it. So, anyways, what are your guys' thoughts? Um, is this something you would have picked for your only game of the year? In fact, what's interesting is I had done a video about. 10 games I'd consider buying and this wasn't even on the list I don't recall but anyways comment below I'd love to hear what you have to say thank you guys so much for watching and stay awesome in this universe thanks bye